Okay, follow along. I'm going to build this wardrobe. You see this is my sketch, my layout. And if you go back and pause that, you'll see my cut list in there as well. Starting with some three-quarter inch birch I picked up at the Home Depot. I try to keep this build cheap and simple so that the average person with some average tools can get something like this done. And here I'm just cutting up all my plywood and I'm working with a bunch of stuff Rockla supplied me. I actually like that particular thing that is a countersink hidden by the drill driver. And it affords me the ability to do some countersinks and then quickly put screws right there and then. And it's nice to clamp this plywood in place when you're putting those screws in. It keeps things from shifting around. And so this is a, a wardrobe that's going to be rather large. It's about 45, 46 inches wide. And it definitely will not fit out of my shop. It won't go up the sidewalk hole. And wherever it's going, it's going to my friend's house. I don't know exactly where inside the apartment. I do know that they have a tiny foyer in the building and it would be difficult to get inside. So I'm making this in two pieces. It also helps me with the layout to build it this way. So I built the skinny section, now I'm building what's going to be the fatter section. And I, I give myself some lines where there's going to be some fixed shelves. And I like to drill from the inside out. It gives me an indication where the screw needs to be once the wood is on the line. So that's a little trick I like to do. I drill from the inside out first. And I'm using these corner braces that Rockla sells. They actually came in really handy. And I'm just screwing from the outside and later on I'm going to put some wood putty in there. Like I said, I didn't want to overcomplicate this build because I want the average person to feel like they could handle this. It's just kind of big and there's just a lot to it. And there's a order or a process that you follow that helps make the build go smoothly. And right now I'm building the big boxes themselves and now I'm going to put a back in it. And I'm going to set the back in. You can see now those shelves, those fixed shelves, are set back a half inch. And that's to accept a half inch backing. And I'm insetting it. I'm using a router bit there to give me a little countersink or a rabbit on the inside edge there. I'm using my shoulder plane just to clean up where I wasn't able to pass all the way through because the shelves were there. Cleaning up all the plywood edges. And now I'm making the backing cutting it from half inch plywood and I do my long cuts and I do my cross cuts off camera with the cross cut sled and now I'm gluing the back in I rounded the corners to accommodate the bit for the router bit and I'm clamping everything together just so everything pulls in square and I'm just using some staples and if you'll notice I'm kind of favoring the inside meat of each one of those pieces of plywood just in case I get a blowout the nails I'm using aren't all that long, so a blowout wouldn't be severe. And now I'm making all my edge banding using poplar. I make about 3 eighths of an inch. And I'm using the bandy clamps here. That's really good about these is typically I would use pin nails. And then later on, when I wanted to use a hand plane, I have to remember that there's pin nails in there and, and it's, it's a no-go. So now that I'm just using exclusively glue for this project because the band clamps are actually really useful and helpful, later on you'll see me use a hand plane to clean everything up. Whenever I'm doing edge banding like this I always make sure that I go long. I like to be able to know that I can work up to the edge as opposed to being just a millimeter short that would make things difficult to fix. And so this is what I was talking about. If I had pin nails in there, I wouldn't be able to really just run the hand plane straight across the facade. I'd have to maybe use a, a sanding board, which you'll see me use as well. There it is. So even though everything's supposed to be three-quarter, typically it's a couple millimeters skinnier than the actual hardwood. The plywood's always a couple millimeters skinnier. Now here I'm cutting the doors. And I want to be sure I keep the grain pattern the same because I want the grain pattern to go across all three doors. So I do my rips and then I do my cross cut and this is why I'm putting the tape on there. 
it's good to do that early because uh, you get distracted, you forget, and then all of a sudden the middle door is flipped upside down and the grain pattern no longer matches. And just edge bending everything with about 3 eighths of an inch. And like I said, the hardwood is about 2 millimeters wider than the plywood, so it gives me a lot of room to build up to it. And again, I always go long on the wood. That just happens to be the actual length of the, the hardwood, so I just let it run long. And now here I'm using my Lee Nielsen plane and a sanding long board just to get everything nice and smooth. And a lot of times when I'm feeling what I'm doing, I'm not looking at it because I don't want the visual to influence what I think I'm feeling. So I'm constantly touching that and not looking at what I'm touching. Now here I am, I'm basically done with the doors for the moment. And then I jump to the drawers. And now this shelf's going to have six drawers. I'm going to use undermounts, undermount, plumb undermount, soft closers. And I, I like that crosscut sled there. I have a crosscut sled, but I live in a human basement down there, and from time to time, the thing swells. Just to have a one-sided one is actually really nice. And you know, I'm, I'm splitting these pieces right here into exact thirds, so I'm able to put two off the edge of the sled, and then I use that blue stopper for the last one. And what I'm doing here is I'm doing a, a dado and a rabbit joint for a drawer, so each corner gets a a dado and a rabbit connection and I'm also skimming off that this is pre-finished plywood by the way so I'm skimming off that pre-finished right there so I have a good glue joint and there you see just these drawers this is old half inch Baltic birch that I have I had just enough to make the drawer body so once I know that that fit is nice and snug I make the rest of them and now I have to make a drawer bottom that goes inside I can't do a proper dado on the table saw because the dado is going to show through the side joint there so I had to use that router and I went deep enough so I could make it inside each one of the corners and doing this is a dangerous operation you see I'm bolted down to those big steel bricks everything's locked in place nothing's glued yet but you'll notice I'm using my whole upper body right here you can see I'm using my whole upper body I'm hardly bending my arms because I don't want to lose control of that router it's really important now I'm making the draw bottoms and I had the rounded corner because of the router bit so I have to round that corner so everything fits inside and just get rid of all the the fuzz on that and since I'm using undermounts I have to notch the back of each one of the drawers so the undermounts have a place to go and now I'm gluing everything together clamping it and Although in this project, by the end of this video, I'm not going to paint anything, I do want to make sure that I don't have any glue on any of that end grain because later on when we do wipe it down with a poly or something, I want to make sure that it doesn't show any glue stains. And I have 15 inch undermounts, but I'm using 16 inch drawers, so that's why I had to add that one extra inch because these clips need to mount in the proper spot. And you'll see what I mean here. And so here's these, uh, these are a little bit more adjustable, so I got these from, from the Rockless Supply. They gave me these in addition. If you buy those undermounts, it comes with these clips, but these particular clips are just a little bit more adjustable. And here you see me making the holes. The back of the slides have fangs, and right there the fangs grab into those holes, and the undermount clips are hidden underneath. And now I need to install five more. And so I just typically do the bottom drawer and then just jump up from there all the while making sure that I'm level from left to right and front to back. These drawers need a lot of adjustment once you put them in so they might not be perfectly level so I'll typically use one side to get my spacing for the next drawer and then I'll transfer that line across with a ruler to the opposite side. I don't always rely on a spacer on one side of the drawer and a spacer on the other side of the drawer not with undermounts because like I said they're very adjustable and the drawer might not be perfectly level and so now we're ready to do the doors so I bring the cabinet up on the table and since this is going to be fastened in place I just drill the pilot holes and set some screws in place and now here we go putting the doors on and we have these super wide open hinges they'll, they'll pull off and away from the cabinet 
and I'm using this Rockla jig just to get my hole set in the right spot on my own handmade jig and you'll see how I use this in a minute. When I have more than one door to set I will typically do this and it gives me the opportunity to set the hinges in place and then I use that same sacrificial strip for each jam. So there and I got to make sure that I cleared the drawers as well. So now those hinges are in place on that jam. I'm using the same strip. I installed the hinges in that jam piece. I installed the hinges in that same sacrificial piece. Again, that, that acts as that part of what's going to ultimately be the door. And it's two-sided. Those holes go completely through it. So I have to make sure that I keep it up in the same direction each time I use it. And then I have the right edge facing out. And now that all the hinges are in place, I'm going to use that same strip as my guide for the holes. So the hole pattern now is going to be the same on each door. All the while being conscious that that tape is still on the doors, left, right, and middle, so I know that my grain pattern is matching throughout. And so now I do the second door. Everything seems to be working well. Now the third door. Now I use that same strip for six operations, installing the hinges three separate times and drilling the holes on each door three separate times. So now everything is in alignment. And now you see everything's working well. And now I'm filling in the holes. That door jam jig is something I came up with many, many years ago. It's just that it's the only way I know how to put these doors on and make them work from door to door. And now I need to make the legs. They're going to be little five inch stubby legs and I'm making them out of poplar. This is the same poplar I use for the edge banding. Get rid of the majority of the material that can fit under the bandsaw. And that happens to be a brand new blade. I put it on just for this. That's why I'm able to whip through that 14 tooth per inch bimetal quarter inch thick blade. And now I'm using the Rockler lathing tools to get my shape. And I'm using an old Delta Midi lathe that I've had now for at least 10 years. You can see it's a little beat up. And once I get my first pattern done, that becomes the pattern for each one to copy. And I keep it nearby. I just use my calipers. And there I am just working it in. And as long as the left and right ends are the same as my first one, the middle is easy. I could even work the middle even with just a sanding block. And there you go. And there's my beautifully overproduced shot. Dust flying in. And now, because this is so heavy and it's in two pieces, I want to make sure it sits on a stage. So where it's going to live is in an apartment in Brooklyn. And like I said, I want to make sure that we're able to get this in to the building, out of my building, and into that building. And now I'm just using a hole punch to make some pads for the legs. Pre-drilling the handles. Handles are screwed in place from the back. And we are basically done with my part of the job. The client, who happens to be a friend of mine, she wants to paint it herself so she understands how that works because she's a, a maker in training. And there you have it. A cabinet made with five sheets of plywood. Man, that was a lot of work. But I'm happy with the way it came out. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something.